everybody, it is Marie here from the Quarantine Diaries. Today is Tuesday, um, day 20, April 14th. Wow, where's, where's the time gone? I'll just turn those speakers off. Before. I'm a bit late and a bit disorganised this morning, I have to say. Um, and I do apologise if you pick up. It's very, very windy here in Napier today. So if, you, if it does sort of sound like that I'm about to take off at any moment, um, it's because I'm in the she shed and uh, the, yeah, it's the, I'm getting a bit buffeted by the wind out here. So fear not, fear not. I, I should be fine. But yes, if you do hear some crazy sounds, it's not the dogs for a change. It will be potentially uh, all the wind that's going on outside. Uh, so hey, wasn't did you have you caught yesterday's uh, episode yet? Wasn't Tom fantastic? I'm so delighted to have caught up with him. Um, we've had a relationship uh, with Tom, for, with the mill and ourselves for a, a few years now and of course I took our Knit August Nights cruise group there at the end of last year and I know a number of Kiwis have gone over to the wool gathering events that used to be held there as a retreat um, also and it's just, it is quite a magical place, uh, Tandawan Court Station or Tandi as it's affectionately known and it was so good to catch up with Tom and talk about you know the origins of the Polworth breed of sheep. It is, I mean when I go away uh, to shows or at, at events or even if I'm in the shop um, here in Napier, one of the number one questions that uh, I get asked often is what is Polworth and, and it's so good to be able to not only explain that hey yeah this is a breed of sheep but to know actually these origins, the origin story behind it, the history behind it, it is something that is truly an Aust Australasian um, or an Australian breed of sheep so it is something that is very unique to this part of the world and it's a fibre that I think truly re reflects uh, who we are down in, down in this bottom part of the world. You know, it's a fibre that is resilient. It's a fibre that is beautiful and lustrous and, and long and can withstand things, but is flexible and um, can do so many things and be wonderful through so many crafts. So thanks again to Tom for taking the time to join us yesterday. And uh, it was, yeah, something really enjoyable so and we've still got so what are we so tomorrow will be day 21 so that's what three weeks Whew, three weeks tomorrow um i almost think day 21 i almost feel like we need to pop a cork and do a yard arm or something special for something like that don't we really I have to think about that i might have to do an extra big oh i know i know i know it's just come to me poof just like a light bulb did you see it Light bulb. I know what I'll do for tomorrow. Um, but I've still got plenty of people that I am uh, lining up to talk to before the quarantine diaries is over. And we'll find that out, you know, with the announcement on Monday, won't we? Um, good morning, everybody. Oh, there we go. Solange is saying that it's super windy in Fakatane as well. Yeah, windy here too. And cold. It's gotten really cold. Um, but anywho, yesterday, Easter Monday, uh, so I only worked until about one o'clock yesterday and then uh, went in and uh, did a bit of a knit up and wash, wash some trashy tally with my kids which was very enjoyable and I finished a thing I finished something I have no idea how exciting that is considering I started this in September last year so uh, Hugo number two son who some of you have met here on the diaries he popped in to say hello um, last week uh, he turned 12 a few days ago and he is so funny because of my two boys uh, Louis has actually been the one that has always liked to wear my knitting and I have always knit for Louis and now he doesn't like to, when he was little he used to wear stuff all the time as he got older he would only ever wear sort of one thing at a time so I would have one jumper and that would be the one jumper that he would wear until it didn't fit anymore and then he would I would make another one and then that's the jumper that he would wear until it wouldn't fit anymore and in fact I am going to need to knit something for him too because uh, he has gone like a piece of chewing gum he has got so tall uh, that he yeah the jumper that I knitted last year from some of the naturally drift merino did you any of you guys pick up some of that in the sale it's that beautiful marl I had the natural mild one and I just did a sort of it was a variant on the t-shirt vest I think from Kylie Bates and but I stuck a hood on it and I also did a short row shaping thing at the back 
uh he's been wearing that but i have to it's it's just it doesn't it will not fit him for this winter i definitely know that so uh and he's sort of tra he's puberty is struck now too so we now you know i did that for him when he was quite a, you know a boy and now of course he is a young man oh, i've just realized i've been looking at the camera going why am i looking so dark? i haven't turned the light on gosh i think i'm gonna turn the light on people good grief it's been one of those days Hopefully, we'll, there we go. Let there be light. Oh, that's better. That's much better. Look at that. Hey, camera's not working, having to work so hard now. God, great. It has. It it's been one of those mornings. Uh, where was I? Yes, Louis. Going to have to knit something for him. But anyway, back to this. So I finished a thing. So this is the jumper. Now it's not blocked. So as you can see, because the next line's all gooby, gooby, gooby. So it's not blocked. Um, now this is the pattern here, which is a neck down hooded pullover for men. Uh, and I haven't done the hood. The reason I haven't done the hood is I ran out of yarn. Uh, so, and actually I spoke to Hugo about it and I said to Hugo, did you want the hood? And he tried it on. He said, actually, no, I don't want the hood. So it's, I haven't, and I also, um, there's buttons to go here. And I haven't done, and I don't have any buttons at home. So, uh, so there are no buttons. Well, I have buttons at home, but they're all like tiny little weenie buttons. And, uh, and these are, need to be, and I actually think this is, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but this to me is either screaming um, a medium-sized coconut shell button or a wooden toggle. I don't know. I mean, that's what it says to me. So I will, um, and as we don't, we don't do buttons, I will be popping to our neighboring store once she reopens and I've got to get some buttons for that. Um, but I, yeah, no, I'm quite pleased with it. I mean, he wanted something, and if you look at this and you go, how old is your kid again? Yes, he is only 12. But he wanted something that was like a big, extra big sloppy joe. Um, now, I'll be brutally honest with you. I don't like how she's written the sleeves on this, if I'm being perfectly honest. I mean, she, and I've checked and rechecked. Now, to be fair, if I'd carried on with these sleeves as she's written them, I would have had a slightish taper, but they would have been down. They, I mean, honestly, they would have been orangutan sleeves. Um, so I have kind of truncated them. I've tried them on and actually truncated them. Um, if I need to lengthen the sleeves at a later date for him, I have got a part ball left, which then means what I can do is unravel this cuff and then add in an inch or what have you here uh, with the ball that I've got left and if I need to to do that um so i've held on to that but no so that's it there so it's going to get blocked today um i'll probably just steam block this to be brutally honest with you the yarn is lodge uh which is a aaron weight yarn um but actually to be fair something like this i think would work really really well in our southland of dk uh but hugo this is the color he wanted he picked this out so um yeah i finished something <sighs> Especially something that's been sitting around for a really long time. So I feel quite good about that. I feel very good about that. So I've got another project in a basket, uh, which is sort of like a purple poncho-y thing, which I've been chipping away at for, for a similar length of time. In fact, I think I might have started that a little bit later. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, and then the scarf that I started to make for Louis in the summer holiday, which I now have found, um, if you've watched previous, I'd lost but I found it now, which is great. But now I remember why I had shelved it is because I needed more yarn. So, and of course I'm not going into work and um, I'm not, and it's not essential. So I won't be getting Damien to send it to me. Um, so it can wait, but yay, I finished something. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Uh, so it's quite good. So I'm going to probably, um, I'm actually taking Ethan's mantra on this. Uh, when one finishes something, that then means that one can cast something else on. 
So that's what I'm thinking I might do. Uh, they have been talking to Ethan's from Outlaw Yarn, if you don't know our Ethan. We've been having pyjama party Saturdays here every Saturday. And one of the things um, we they've been talking about is they've been doing different stashy bits and pieces. Um, and they are getting quite excited about tea cozies. Uh, and wanting to do some stuff with tea cozies and I know actually on our cruise we did some stuff um, on our can cruise we did uh, one of the classes that I did well I didn't do it that I helped arrange with the wonderful Susan Hagedorn was she did mug cozies which were fabulous and I haven't actually I should have grabbed them for sitting outside anyway but that and um, I showed you a book Ugh. As I move you, I've got so much stuff piled up on my desk. One of these days, we're going to be in here. It's all going to go crash. So I mentioned that book the other day, I think, with Ethan. And one of the items in here, and it wasn't that one. Am I going to find it? Oh, it's, no, it's not that one either. Where is it? I'm going to find this because I'm quite determined now. Now that I've started this train of consciousness. So I looked at it the other day. I saw it the other day and I thought, oh, that's right. Anyway, it was an anchor. And uh, because obviously we were on a cruise, uh, we did um, the anchor theme. So, um, and it was just, you know, that kind of thing. On there so it was loads and loads of fun so she um so if you've got scraps and bits and pieces lurking around um and you're looking to do something like that definitely head over um they're doing that over on the outlaw outlaw there um and we will be talking about that on um saturday and we're also going to talk about sort of motifs stitch, stitch patterns um i've actually got some sp stitch bibles and diaries and um some other bits and pieces you know playing around with those other th adding something that something small like that can create a really you know just change the whole makeup of a design or a pattern um by just adding something like that so yes that's what we're doing uh so then in terms of casting stuff on i've had sitting in a bag i have these don't laugh so if i've got small projects and i then quarantine yarn off to be cycled out for these projects i have a, a massive collection of these bags right aren't they sexy so i know you so want one of these really sexy horse stable scour sample bags with even little batch samples and everything so this is when we have scour samples come back from the scour, they come back in these little baggies. Little, uh, um, they're like sheeting, polyester sheeting material, baggies. And uh, Matt, so they go to Matthew, our technical manager. And so Matthew, bless them, he saves them all up and uh, he gives them to me. And I then soak them and wash them because nine times out of ten they're covered in grease and lanolin and everything else. Um, but I just, but they were these nice little drawstring baggies and they're the perfect little project bags. And I recycle everything, all right? So I will then often put small projects in these little bags to quarantine them off uh, for things that, you know, like there'll be yarns that to me speak to each other. Um, and I will see a combination, I go, oh, they have to be friends, because they speak to each other, or there'll be a reason why I'll, I'll put them together, and, and one, this was a bag that I pulled out, and I have been meaning to do something with this combination for so long, and I think I will actually do it now, and these are some yarns that I purchased, as I've mentioned in the past when I travel I don't necessarily buy souvenirs when I travel I will often go to yarn stores and buy yarn when I travel particularly if, it's, if it speaks to me or if it's something a little bit different and then um, I will make something from that and that becomes the souvenir of the place where I've been so it'll be oh this is some mitts that I've made from a ball of yarn that I bought in Sydney or um, what was it? the Aranami shawl that I showed you the other day the whole center panel of that shawl the two balls of yarn that I had bought in Sydney and I built it around those two balls of yarn so for me whenever I wear that project I think about that time I, I happened to be there so it's just how my crazy brain works 
don't try and get in there because it's cray cray. So anyway, one time I was in Hobart. I've been to Hobart a couple of times. Um, and if anyone has been to Hobart, they'll understand what a really magical city Hobart is. Hobart is, um, for those who haven't been to Hobart, Hobart is a little bit like if Wellington and Dunedin were to have a love child, it would be Hobart. So it's got the geography very, very, actually quite similar to both, but more the geography akin to Wellington, but with the feel and the architecture of Dunedin. So that's, that's Hobart. So I was there and they have a very, very famous, famous, super, sorry, I'm very drunk, I had a cup of tea. A very, very famous market in Hobart called the Salamanca Market. And it's like an art and craft market. So it's kind of like part farmer's market, part arts and craft, mostly arts, arts and crafts. But, oh, it's the freaking noise. It is so amazing. It is like, because Tasmania is full of these incredible artisans. There are the most amazing artisans there. Woodworkers, leather workers, jewellery makers, print makers, artists, um, fibre artists, weavers. Oh, you name it. And they're there. In this market, I, th I think it's held weekly. Um, if somebody knows, and I know I had someone from Tassie here yesterday, so if you, if please pop it in the comments if you can. It's either weekly or monthly, but either way, it just one of the days that I happened to be there with the market was on, and it was yeah, it was freaking fantastic. And in fact, I did actually buy what did I buy from there? I bought it was my mum's. Um, I was there just for my mum's birthday, and I bought uh, this beautiful little um, hand felted. Uh, brooches uh, and flower like for poppies and um, and stuff. Oh, it's just so amazing, beautiful. Uh, yes, very fond. Anywho, anywho, where was I going with this? There's also a wool shop right down where they hold the market, and it's called uh, the Salamanca Wool Shop. And I went into there, and it was just it, it's not the biggest store, but she was a it was jumping and jiving. It was a really busy, vibrant, active, wonderful little store. And, it, and I love going into these stores where it just like the yarn is almost falling off the shelves at you because it's just so chocker full of goodness. And that's what the shop was like. So I was in there and uh, my colleague Peter had actually been to Hobart uh, not too long before I had gone and so he was over visiting extended family there and had called in there and had chatted to the owner so then I rocked in and uh, yeah so she'd met Peter so we talked about work and yarn and fibre and stuff it was great so one of the things that I instantly got drawn to was that I mean hello it's got me written all over it, does it not? Um, and it was actually sitting on the shelf like that. So it just, you know, it just sat there going, Marie, Marie. So I had to buy it. See, look, there's the other end. Oh. I mean, to me, it, I, mean, does, I mean, doesn't that look like something straight from the palette of Vincent van Gogh? It does, right? It's not just me. It's gorgeous. So this is called uh, Malila. Malila? From Cascade Yarns. Uh, I don't know whether it's still made. I don't know why it's still whether it's still around. Hundred gram ball, two hundred meters. So, ha ha ha. This is one of the little quirks of the Americans for you. So, from a mill standpoint, a hundred grams at two hundred meters, right? From a count perspective, that is um, smack being in DK territory. From a spinning perspective. So if we were to make this yarn, that's it would be a DK. I it's a single, it's a woolen spun. There you go. It's a DK. I don't care how they try and slice it and dice it, it's a DK. But the ball band, the ball band, the ball band says um, it has a tension of 16 to 18 stitches with a five to five millimeter needle. Um, and so therefore they're saying that this is a um, worsted weight or 10, 12 ply in our language. Um, yeah. Quote Daryl Kerrigan, the dramon. Anyway, that's just me. 40% uh, silk. Yes, yes, Marie. Yes, I know. 
I know, my silk fetish is now coming out. 40% uh, silk, 40% wool, and 20% nylon. So, so that's that there. So I only, so as you can imagine with the silk content, um, I mean, she wasn't the cheapest ball of yarn in the store, but at a single ball, I mean, I just, to me, that just typified um, Tasmania. I just loved it. So I bought that. So then, of course, being the magpie that I am, I went around and I came across these two. I bought two of these, another 100 grams. And it's looking very washed out in the camera, but is actually a bright citrus lime green. And I am, um, and this is uh, Biggin Designs, which if you are Australian, you'll know that this is um, uh, an Australian producer. It's made from Australian yarn. So it was uh, classically, classically Aussie. Uh, and it's a just a it's pretty standard, typical um, machine washable DK Merino. Lovely and soft, beautiful bounce. Um, it's the colour that drew me straight away. It's a colour that we don't have in um, our palette at home. I didn't have in my palette. And it's a colour I love. But why I got it is, there you go, is that same lime is actually reflected here. And, of course, they're very much good friends, aren't they? They, you know. Uh, they're very good friends. So I made sure I got 100 grams of this and 100 grams of that. Meterages are pretty much the same. Uh, and I figured, right, that's 200 grams of some really nice yarn. I'm going to do something with this. Yeah, what I'm going to do, yeah, I have absolutely no idea. Um, I do have a vague feeling that I might actually throw this on some big needles and do something like um, an oversized hitchhiker or um, a variance of a Niata or something to that ilk. I really haven't quite decided yet. Um, or I may even throw it on some big oversized needles and actually do like an oversized ripple stripey um, ever after cowl because and actually do it outside. So instead of doing it um, to the four, four, four or four point five that I would normally do this on, actually go to what this is saying and do five point five or even six millimeter needles and do something sort of quite long and fun. I don't know. I don't know, but they've been sitting in this wee baggie now for um, almost pretty much since I got back from Tasmania, waiting, waiting for the perfect time and moment to be um, made into something. And I think this is now, really. Um, they're all ready to go. The colours are fantastic. Um, it would certainly brighten up the wardrobe for winter. So, yeah. And I'm taking Ethan's logic that now that I've finished something, I can cast something new on. I mean, the fact that I have, you know, one, two three three other works in progress yeah because the experimenting with it um with a county that doesn't count that's just experimenting experimenting is different from a whip experimenting is just experimenting yeah so that's what i'm going to do it's going to be quite exciting i think i'm quite looking forward to that um you may have noticed i have busted out some mohair today uh, this is from the uh, Vintage Busky Hand Knit Collection. Um, this is uh, some, I don't know who we did this mohi for. It wasn't, it's, it's spun by us. It was, it predates me working at Design Spun. So this would have been about, this would probably be about 15 years old. Um, a Gita Schrader pattern. It was a naturally pattern. Um, and it's yeah done in pieces, lovely big cow neck. And I, it's one of those funny things. It's it's a jumper that I never wear out. I only ever wear around the house or at home. But it's one of those again comfy kind of you know it's my jumper. And I just thought it's cold today here, and I thought oh I'm gonna bust that out. So and I've actually had a look on Ravelry because Gita has got a design page on Ravelry and it's not listed there. And I think it was called something like. Um, I've got the leaflet somewhere. I had the leaflet, it, it's, and it was a discontinued pattern um, that naturally had I'd bought it. Yeah, but it's you know, it's a comforting thing, isn't it? Wearing comforting thing. Right, let me jump in and see if anybody has um, got any questions. Ha! Tibbs is going. Yeah, have I got a dollar for every time I've been asked that? Oh my god, I know, right? Yes. Anyway, um, yeah, it sounds like the weather is a bit meh in loads of places. Oh, I see Glynis is here. I'm going to do some spinning, I think, Glynis. I've decided I've got these bumps sitting there 
that Kate Marnie done, and I just keep looking. I've actually pulled them out because they were sitting inside a tea cozy that I had to use as oh, where's the tea cozy going anyway? Tea cozy I was using as a prop, and I've literally had them sitting there, like staring at me. They they're actually I think they're actually sitting there goading me and teasing me and telling me that I need to you know get over my big bad self and pull the wheel out and. And I need to do a bit of that wheel maintenance too. So that's why, I'm, yeah, I do need to, you know, all the, because I have all this free time. Hey. Um, oh, can you show us the short row shaping thing that you did on my son's last jumper? Louise, you expect to need to have written that down? Okay, no, I can actually. It's um, not that hard. Let me find a piece of paper. I'm not going to give you exact numbers. But I can give you at least, because when I did this, when I did that short row shaping, Louise, I was um, under the influence of Chardonnay at the time. Uh, in fact, I do some of my best work under the influence of Chardonnay. Um, it's because, I, I don't know why, it's probably because I'm often, after a certain hour, under the influence of Chardonnay. Not always, but frequently. Anyway, I'm just going to sharpen a pencil so I can show you what I'm talking about. Right, so... And it's in my coffee-stained notebook here. I'm going to show this to you. And hopefully, oh, I might have to do it in a Sharpie so you can see. Let me change from a pencil to a Sharpie, shall we, people? I'm sure I have one here in my box, my box of tricks. Right. Yes, I do. Right. All right. Good. Okay. That's better. All right. So, so here's the back of your hood. Right now, normally you would just go straight across the bottom, right? So what I do is I have so you you've been working either in the round or straight, depending on however you've been working. Um, but I take whatever the two. If you're working in the round, this is essentially the midpoint of your two underarms. Okay, if you're working flat, it's just the flat piece. For the short row shaping that I did, what I decided is I wanted to create a gentle curve. So I then would knit across to essentially just beyond halfway. And a lot of this is sort of kind of rough maths. So you take your halfway point and then I knitted beyond that a certain number of stitches. And I think in this particular instance, it was about five stitches from memory. Was um, you can either do so the greater number of stitches that you work, the shallower the curve, the smaller number of stitches you work, the deeper the curve. Yes, yes, I just need to think about that for a second. Um, so I think it was about five stitches. Then I just, I just do a simple wrap and turn, nothing exciting. Okay, and I was working in stocking stitch, so literally got to a point, uh, slipped the stitch, wrapped it, then went back, and then I worked back, uh, wrong side, pulled back, then I um, and I would and I went back to uh, about five stitches from where that ended. Did a wrap and turn there. Oh, actually, tell a lie. I went all the way to there. Sorry, my bad. I went all the way to there, to five stitches from that point. That's right. Wrapped and turned there, went back to about five stitches there, wrapped and turned, and then went back to about five stitches previous to the previous wrap, turned, went back five stitches to the previous wrap, turned, five stitches previous wrap, turned, five stitches turned, and then I did it until I had, at the bottom of that curve, what was essentially 10 stitches-ish across the bottom, so then I had my curve created, and then I would go complete the row, and then on the row that I worked back, once I'd completed the row back, I would then go back and knit it back all the other way and do it. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. So then what I so then effectively what I've done is I've done this, and I've gone one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And then I've just knitted all the way back up like that, and then all the way back around. That's how I did mine. Um, and then I just picked up the wraps as I went along. Now, I did that, and what I also did on this sweater 
is to, because I'd done that curve, is I then, when I bound it off, I actually did an eye called bind off. So if you've ever done an eye called bind off, it's usually around a four stitch bind off. So it, you know, it's like essentially working for more rows. I won't lie to you. I mean, she's not a quick bind off in any way, shape or form. But what it then did is it gave me this nice, beautiful tubular um, edge, which then held that curve just beautifully. And it also meant that any of those wraps if any of them looked a bit manky or ugly, just it, everything, it, it just it just smudged it away and made it look absolutely beautiful. Um, in fact, I've got, and I've got one sitting just here in my magical box of, no, I've got one just sitting over here, I'll show, and I'll show you that bind off. Aha! There we go. Oh, there we go, and that one's actually easier to see. Oh, actually, and that's not a bind off. Oh, is that a bind off? Yeah, it is. Because there was a big one that got picked up, and then the other, yes, it is a bind off. So, this is the doodler, and this one's easy to see because it's um, two different colours. So, that's that. Oh, gosh, I'm not cover the microphone so then you won't hear a thing. So, that's that bind off there. See how it's a nice, and this is a good example because it's showing you the curve. So, that's, see, it's a nice round tubular wonderful so that's how I do it and then you know and if you don't like it now I mean for me it was an experiment I just I just suddenly thought as I was nodding around well that'd be a nice thing to do that's what as I said Chardonnay um yeah so that's what I did but as the other thing to remember too is like as, as you go across I mean I think I was almost certain it was five stitches and it sort of gave me a sort of a shallowish curve if you were to do say a two stitch wrap and turn then that would give you a much deeper curve because you're going backwards and forwards backs 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 and forwards back until you get to that point at the end I hope that makes sense and if you don't like it then you just frog it back that's what I do well, don't always do that, but yes. Uh, right, what else have I got here? Oh, thank you, Muriel. She likes my jumper. That's good. Ah, Marion has done a phoenix from um, Libby Johnson in uh, Lodge. Yes, that would look fantastic in Lodge. Absolutely um, fantastic. Really, really, really good. Ah. Uh, Oh, Rhonda, uh, Rhoda, Rhoda's saying, I've recycled the bag, ah, oh, yes, Rhoda, you are so onto it, so Rhoda is saying here, I've recycled uh, the bags, my microfiber sheets come in as project bags, now Rhoda, you, are, I'm going to show everybody something, you are onto it, Rhoda, so, and I'm going to pick this one up here, because it's not quite as full as the others, and you know what, Rhoda, they are perfect, you are completely right and I um that brings up such weird and, and now so what Rhoda was talking about and I've got the blanket bag here is essentially these and the sheet ones that she's talking about are smaller right um and they're great because they've got a zip at the top but it means that you can keep your project in here and they're clear aren't they Rhoda they're clear so you can see what's in there so I have, um, I did um, replace some curtains just recently. Um, a friend gave me a hand to, to get some curtains replaced. And I, so I ended up with, and they were ready-made. And so some of them we were able to do as ready-made and some of them we were, um, we had to, well, she had to make some alterations because I don't sew, but she does. Anyway, um, and I ended up with six of these. So this is the bag. I actually packed all my samples that I took to the States in these um, so I can see them. But I've actually got a whole heap of these from sheets uh, whenever anyone's buying a duvet or even anybody in the family or anyone that I know that's got some. I was like, I'll have the bag, I'll have the bag. Because I use these actually too as my stash bags. Um, because then A, I can see the yarn inside them. I've got things sorted. It's all zipped up. Uh, they're relatively protected. And unlike tubs, they're soft and pliable. So yeah, so that's another recycling tip. If you're doing a clean out at home or you're um, looking for something to, to recycle as 
project bags. These are just the noise. And actually, while we're on the subject of recycling, this is another one, a little tip I'm going to show you. I have mentioned this before, but, you know, just yes, we've got new people watching. Um, so when you go to buy clothes, how often you go to buy clothes, and particularly if they're some quite nice clothes, if you're lucky to get some nice clothes, they have these, which are the little gar garment, those, or garment, um, there you go, that's better. The little garment um, safety pins with the little thing. Well, hello, best smith stitch markers. I like these ones. Um, I like these because obviously, so these make the best little removable stitch markers because you can move them, you can loop them through. And so whenever I have seen anything, you know, I grab those. I just think they're fantastic. But the, my favorite stitch marker, and have I got one in here? It must be in here. I know I've got it in here somewhere. There it is. It's even colour coordinated with my project. This is my favourite stitch marker in the whole wide world. Can you see that? Let's put something behind it so you can see it. Ugh. There you go. You see that? There you go. Come on, you know you want to. Here you are. See that? That little plastic coloured loop doesn't catch decent size you can go up decent needle size you don't have to worry about a dangly bit being in, you know because i mean these sorts of things that they often make stitch makers are so beautiful they're a pain in the ass i have loads of these like loads of them love them because i think they're really pretty um but to be honest the better earrings than they are stitch makers um these were stitch makers <laughs> they are earrings yes yeah, chardonnay um anywho these are my number one favorite stitch marker in the world you know what that is that is the plastic little plastic thing if you have an oral b toothbrush and you buy the little replacement toothbrush heads they often have a little plastic ring that sits around the bottom of that disposable head so you can identify who's toothbrush head that actually is by the color code so if you're somebody that uses a oral b toothbrush and you're a nutter when you go to replace your toothbrush head don't throw out you need to flick off that little plastic rim off the bottom of that and save that because they are the best stitch markers ever ever can everyone hear my dog snoring Someone said to me the other day they could hear the dog snoring all the way through the podcast. He's honest, oh, actually, I'm going to pick this up so you can see him. Ready? Oh, no. At least he's being relatively quiet. Snoring away. Right, so anyway, that best stitch marker ever love it right let me just i've gone and whipped my stitches out and again yes i know maria i should have um point protectors on my needles i know i know i do own them but you know what annoys me is i do own them but then those little fickers get knocked in your project bag and then they fall off and then you get more peeved because those little fickers have fallen off and all your stitches in the I'd much rather just then chastise myself for not, you know, thinking I should know better. Right, okay. See, wine doesn't even come with corks anymore, so you can't even, you know, stick anyhow. First world problems. Um, right, where, did, where was I before I got distracted? Right, I was having a look um, down here. <laughs> uh, I love it. So I just said, great mug, Marie, just caught a glimpse of the wording. <laughs> okay, so if you are sensitive to profanity <laughs> and you're watching me, yeah, not. Yeah, uh, courtesy, that was a gift from Stephen Berg um, to me when I was working there, bless him, because I would, yes. He figured because he has actually another one. I'm gonna. He's got two. He has one that says this, and then a second one that says, 
I'm crocheting. And then, but he also has for those that don't like the profanity, he's actually got like sort of like symbols and then like F with the symbols off I'm knitting. You know, he, he knew that I needed full strength. Um, there was no point giving me symbols. Yeah, it sounds like it's cold. We're everywhere. Oh, so uh, yes, um, Louise, it's called the I Cord Bind Off. I called bind off and in fact I'm just going to have a quick google here one of the people that I've hope well I've spoken to to get on the so, um, show um next week is Suzanne Bryan so I'm just going to because she I know uh has an X I called almost certain she has a um she does she, does she? She does. I'm sure she does. She have it. Ah. So I'm just going to. I'm going to just pop up. Um. I'll pop up. Actually, I'll do it in there because it's not coming up the right link. Anyway, I digress. I will put a link actually to her. Um, she's got two YouTube channels. One of them is all on technique, and I just find that if you're looking for something for technique, she, she's brilliant. Like she's so like if I need to look up something, um, so if I'm doing so, for example, yesterday I was watching something of hers, and it was it was fascinating. It was uh, where is a project that I can show it to you on? I've got something in here that I can show it to you. On. Um, and it was when you're doing um, picking up stitches, particularly if you're picking up stitches for a neckline, and she had a, um, a sample knitted. She was one of it was it was about seaming. The whole thing was about seaming, uh, because let's face it, not all patterns are written in the round. You still get a number of patterns that are se seamed. And what she had done is she was she had a couple of swatches, and um, now Suzanne, for I'm going to get her on the show, and she'll explain this further. But she is um, a master knitter, like Charles. She's a friend of Charles's, which is how I met her. Um, so she had a sample like that. So this is all stocking, plain stocking stitch here, and it was a picked up, um, a picked up piece just there like that for the ribbing. And it was really interesting. So when you have your bits like that, you have like, so if you're working a stocking stitch, it's generally straight stocking stitch to there. Then you have a period of sort of the arc there is like decreasing, right? And then you've got straight stitches there, right? So you've got this sort of arky bit in the middle. So there are a couple of ways, obviously, that patterns will tackle that shaping, whether it be in an underarm or a neckline. And so, um, and she was talking about the two forms. So one of them was whether or not you used an SSK, which then gave you like this nice little run of stitches like that all the way around the edge, which if you were doing plain stockinette and a plain colour against the band, that's what she would recommend. It looks very, very neat, it makes it easy when it comes to pick up the band, just it's tidy. However, if you're doing color work right the other way is is a knit two together so instead of getting this nice run of stitches here what you have is that as as each row of um stitching goes up what the knit two together does is keeps those tight up against the uh the band like that so you actually get uh your working of the, your row of stitchings up and then there is a this is where it ends so it's like and then the next one so now for me personally, I actually quite, I like the, I like all my soldiers in a row. That's just me, called me, crazy. Really, this is what I learned yesterday. See, you, always learning, always learning. What I learned yesterday was if you were working a piece of colour work, you wouldn't want to do the CCSK um because the way you, you would do the SSK with the slip stitch is it would mean that always with a slip stitch you would potentially be bringing over a colour that was, wasn't was part of your palette or, or patterning over in front of what you were trying to do. So you would actually be disrupting your colour palette. And when you're actually doing that in a complex piece of ferrile or mosaic knitting, your eye, instantly, the minute you break your pattern, your eye will go straight to whatever that pattern break is. It's just, it's, it's an optical, it's just, 
how it is. You know, you, I will be drawn to that imperfection straight away. Whereas by doing a knit two together, um, you're not disrupting that color patterning. So if you're doing a fine piece of Shetland um, or ferrile color work or, or, or Scandinavian color work, you would want to definitely use that there. So um, I know I've gone off on a tangent again, but if you were um, Suzanne Bryan, if you're wanting to find out any sort of technique piece in her video. So she has a an interview series that she has called Off the Cuff, and then she also has the most fantastic video library of um, techniques. She's really good. Uh, really, 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 really good. Um, okay, 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 okay. Um, <laughs> show that I've done that. That's good. Ah. Oh, how did I manage to get my hair colouring done? Now, thank you. Someone did actually send a really good tip about the hair colouring. Yes, as you can see, I have been dipped in the fountain of youth. All I have to say is thank God, um, thank God pharmacies deliver. And, um, well, yeah, I, let's put it this way. I got it. Yeah, yes. I had to do it myself. So I think I did all right for me, actually, having to do it myself, because I don't usually do it myself. I usually have help. Um, yeah, no, so I had to do it myself. It was quite hilarious. It took me much longer to do, but I I got instructions. I contact, found a friend, the expert, my expert, and she gave me very clear instructions of what how I needed to tackle it. And, uh, yeah, so I dipped myself in the Fountain of Youth over the weekend. So it's nice to actually ditch the hacks. So that has been very very good um so yeah that's pretty much me for today i don't think i've got um i don't think there's anything else i don't think anyone else has got any other questions three weeks tomorrow i've got something planned for that i think now um yeah and i'm going to talk to um i need to track sophia down i'm hoping to talk to sophia moore's kennedy on Thursday and we're going to talk about crochet uh, and I'm also looking at as I said casting on that new project I think that's going to be a bit of fun as well so until then have a good day and um, stay warm I think for everyone today I might actually just yes yeah, it's clouded over now and I think we might get some rain so I think I might need to try and whip the little my snoring friend down on the mat here might have to see if I can um, take him w-a-l-k-i-e-s because he sometimes can spell. Can you spell? Mine can. Anyway, uh, have a good day. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, um, take care. Stay strong. Three weeks tomorrow, we're doing really well. See you then.